All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how we can get the content in the last row of our data. First, let me show you what we're trying to do here. So we're trying to basically get the last item in the list. So right now, see, we have this list. So in this case, we should get grapes. But if this was missing, we should be getting pineapple and so on. So we need to get the content in the last row of our data. To do this, there are a few different methods and it really depends on your data layout. So the easy option, which will not always work, is gonna be to get the function counter. Now, before I get to counter, let me actually show you the logic behind this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go here and do equals index, that's the function we're gonna use. In this function, the argument is an array. So you just select an array like this. So I've selected this list, comma, and then you have to give it the position. So if I wanted to get lime, that would be one, two, three. So if I type three, hit enter, see I get lime. If I wanted to get the last one, then it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I change it to six, that's gonna give me grapes. Now that's all good, but the problem is we're not gonna be able to just hard code the six here because if we go here and remove grapes, this should be changing to pineapple which it's not gonna do because it's still going to number six. I'm gonna undo this. So we need to get that number six dynamically. We can do this by using counter function. And if we use counter function and just select the same range, see it gets us a six. And the nice thing about this, if we didn't have grapes, this would change to five. If we don't have pineapple, that would change to four. So it just counts how many things we have in this range and it gives us the number. So now we could just grab this counter function copied without the equal sign. I'm going to hit escape, go back to this function and replace the six with my function. I'm going to paste that same counter function. I'm going to hit enter. So now if I go here and remove grapes, see it goes automatically to pineapple. If I remove pineapple, it goes to bananas. So now we're actually able to get the last thing in there. And if you wanted to expand this, you would just go for a larger range instead of going from A2 through A7, you would just go more so that if you add more items, it automatically just adds them. Or we can, because we're in Google Sheets, we can just get rid of the last row argument and just send this all the way down, just like this, press enter, and now it's gonna work. So if we add more things here, let's say we add pairs, it just works, grabs the last item in the list. But this has a major problem. And the problem is, if I didn't have every single cell filled in, this wouldn't have worked. Actually, go back to this so it goes all the way down. So counter function gives us the number of cells that are not blank. So right now, we have this and it counts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The problem is, if one of these cells was blank, see it counts as five because it counts one, two, three, it doesn't count as blank cells and then it goes four, five. So that's why this is no longer working because now this counter is gonna count five and then it's gonna go one, two, three, four, five and there is nothing in here so it returns blank while we should have been getting these pairs. So that's the problem with using this method with counter function, because when you have blanks, this is not gonna work. So how can we go around this so that it works even if we have blanks in here? I'm gonna remove this and walk you through this whole thing. So let me show you what the logic is gonna be behind this and then we'll incorporate this into one single formula. So there is this function in spreadsheets called row. So if I just do row and click on this cell, A1, close this and hit enter. See, I get one because we're in the first row. If I drag this formula down, it goes two, three, four, basically it just gives us the row number. So that's that. I'm gonna add a column here. I'm gonna do another function where I'm gonna check if this cell is blank. The way I can do that, I can do an equal sign and check is this equal to double quotes. It basically says false because it's not blank. Now, if I wanted to check if that cell is not blank, 
then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, is A1 not equal to double quotes? If I hit enter, see, it says true because basically it's not blank. And if I keep dragging this down, see, it says true for all of these because none of these are blank. But if I remove this, say, pineapple, see, this one goes false because now this one is blank. If I remove lime, it's false because this one is blank too. Now, what we can do, we can take this and make it a one and zero instead of making true and false by taking this formula, putting that in parentheses, whatever we call this, and add double negative in front of it. And what's gonna happen with this change, if I take this formula and drag it down, every cell that is not blank is gonna give me one. Every cell that's blank is gonna give me zero. See, we replace trues and falses with ones and zeros. And the reason I want ones and zeros instead of true and falses is this. If I take this number, the row number, and multiply it by this column where I have ones and zeros, if I take that and drag this formula down, what I'm gonna get is the row number if that cell is not blank, and I'm gonna get a zero when that cell is blank, because when we're multiplying by zero, we're gonna get zero. And the same thing here, we multiply by zero, we get zero. In all the other cases, we multiply by one, which is gonna give us the same row number we have here. See, five, five, seven, seven, eight, eight. All right, so we're gonna get these row numbers for only rows where we have stuff in them. And now, if we took all of these numbers and just get the highest number out of this bunch, we should get the row. And the reason that should work, because if we keep scrolling this down, see, it's still gonna be zeros for all of these because these are blank. And then it's gonna be zero for all of those. So now if I just do this function max to get the highest number out of all of these numbers, I'm gonna be getting eight because eight is the highest number in the range, which is the row number that we actually need. And that's gonna be the logic behind this. The problem is, is that we have like 1700 formulas to get there. We need to make all of this that I just talked about in one formula. So let me show you what we're gonna do to make this happen. So I need to basically get rid of all of this and replace this with arrays. So the first one is that one that gives us just the row number. So to do that, I'm gonna do equals row, open parentheses, and instead of just clicking this one cell, I'm just gonna select this whole range. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna send it all the way down, like this. Remove the end row reference, close, and hit enter. Now this doesn't work, because we need to explain that this must be an array formula. So I'm gonna wrap that in array formula function. Close parentheses, hit enter. And see now I have that one formula that returns me this entire range of numbers. That's a good start. Now I need to do that second column. This is where we need to get that ones and zeros. So I'm gonna go here and do an equal sign. If you remember, I was checking if this is not blank, like this. But instead of doing this, I'm just gonna check if this entire column, and I'm gonna remove the end reference again, is not blank. And again, we need to make sure this works as an array formula. And again, I have to use that array formula thing all around this. So I'm gonna do command shift enter to just quickly add that formula around this thing. So I don't have to type that. I'm gonna hit enter. And by the way, that's control shift enter if you're on Windows or Linux, but here we go. So we got trues and falses. So again, I need to convert this to ones and zeros. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and take this thing inside of parentheses and add double negative in front of it. Hit enter, and we got our ones and zeros. So blanks are zeros, non-blanks are ones. Next formula was this times this to get the third column, which we can do by basically using these two things together. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this one, just copy it, hit escape, paste it right here. So that just repeats the column. And then I'm gonna go in this formula and take the formula without the array formula part, the part that gives me ones and zeros, copy it, hit escape, go back here, and in this formula, I'm gonna take this row thing, and I'm gonna multiply it 
by my array. Now, because this needs to be an array with those ones and zeros, and we're doing this multiplication, we need to make sure this is separate from this. See, it gives me this error thing. So we need to wrap that in parentheses from both sides. So this array thing happens with ones and zeros. Then we're gonna multiply it by the row number. So I'm gonna take this, hit enter again, and I got my one, two, three, zero when it's a blank and zero here. So now I don't really need these two columns. This is still gonna work because it's just one formula. So finally, I want all of these inside of that max function to just get me this eight. So I'm gonna take this and wrap this whole thing inside of a function max, just like this. Close parentheses, hit enter, and I got my eight. Let me change the color for this. There we go. So this gives us the eight, which means that now we should be able to, for example, if I remove pairs, see it's gonna go to seven. Let me get rid of this. And if I add things here, that should still work. See, it's still seven because this is the last one. And if we go and add something in here, in row 11, it's gonna say 11. So now we have a formula that gives us the last row, regardless if we have blanks here or not. So now we just need to put this inside of that index function. So I'm gonna take that formula, copy it without the equal sign, hit escape, go someplace in here and do equals index, open parentheses. And because now we're going with the row number in our spreadsheet, instead of starting my highlighting from here, from this row number, I'm gonna start highlighting from here and go down. And again, I want the whole column, so I'm gonna remove the end reference, comma, and this is where we need to provide the index, the number. Just paste my other array formula, close parentheses, hit enter, and I got grapefruit. So now if I remove this grapefruit out of here, we get grapes because this gives us the right number. Now we don't really need to keep this seven number here. This should just work on its own. So if I remove orange here, that's still gonna do grapes. And if I go and add like orange somewhere in here, it just works. And you could use the same technique if you had to do this for columns. So if your data was going like this way, instead of going this way, you could have done that as well. Let me actually do that really quickly. I'm gonna just copy this and just transpose this. So to do this, again, it's gonna be the same logic, only now we have to get our arrays this way. So I'm gonna go here and start with my first function is gonna be instead of row, it's gonna be column because we're working with columns. I'm gonna do column. And then if I take all of these like that, and I wanna keep going all the way. So I'm gonna remove this J reference to send this all the way to the right. I'm gonna take that, close parentheses, and if I do command shift enter to do my array formula, this is gonna give me a reference error because I'm trying to put all the column numbers starting from the second, but there's not enough room. So if I just cut this and put this over here, it should actually work. So that's good, one, two, three, four, five. This gives me basically my column numbers. Now I need that second formula with ones and zeros. So again, I'm just going to just grab this range remove the J column reference to go all the way to the right. And then I'm gonna check, is that not equal to blank? And then we'll just do that whole double negative thing around this formula. And I'm just gonna do another parentheses because I'm gonna need this when I copy this formula. And I'm gonna do command shift enter to add the array formula around this. I'm gonna hit enter. See, I get one, one, zero for blanks. So now I just have to multiply this by this. So again, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy, not that whole thing, just this part inside of the array formula. Hit escape, go back to this formula and take this column thing and multiply it by my second array. I'm gonna press enter. So now it's pretty much gonna be the same only for blanks, it's just gonna give us zero. And now if I take this whole thing, and put it inside of a function max. It's 
it's gonna give us the column number. So the last column is column number nine. I don't need this, I'm gonna remove that. So I got this, that gives me the column number. At this point, I just have to put this inside of my index function. So I'm gonna go here, copy this formula without the equal sign, hit escape, go here and do equals index. And again, I have to select the column. I wanna keep going all the way right, so I'm gonna remove the J column reference to just pull this all the way right. That's my index function, comma. Then I need the column number after the comma, so I'm gonna paste the column number. Close parentheses, enter. I got orange. And if I wanted to get something that's after orange, let's say I get something that says blueberries, it works. It's just gonna get me the last thing, and this is gonna give me the last column number. I don't need the number here, I just need this. And now this is just gonna work. If we don't have this orange, it's still blueberries. If I remove blueberries, then it's grapes. And that's it, that's our formula. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.